Yeah, you can give that to Ivy as well. I don't care. Wow, this deck is actually working. Yes, you have a better Ivy. And we are going to give flying to Volo so you don't block it. Yes, check this out, baby. You're watching Brassarobot MTG, one of the greatest historic brawl channels in the world. I'm Gabriel and today we are going on an adventure. Our commander is Gorion, Wise Mentor, which is a 3 mana 3 4 human wizard in banked colors. He has vigilance and whenever we cast an adventure spell, we may copy it and choose new targets. Adventures are actually not really good on their own, except for a few cases, but this commander might actually make them good. Our strategy is to play adventures, double up their effect, use the creature's side but also bounce the creature back to our hand, so we can reuse the adventure one more time. So we are an adventurous deck, but with a very heavy tempo package to delay our opponents, but also to use it to our favor. Let's go to the deck. Section 1. The best cards. Edgewall Innkeeper is an amazing card draw engine for the adventure strategy, giving us a card whenever we cast a creature that has an adventure. Lucky Clover is the same ability as Gorion, but in an artifact. These are easily our best cards. Cards. Section 2 Adventures. Here we have all the adventure cards we run. Some of them are really bad and janky, some of them are medium to good, and some of them are awesome, like Brazen Borrower, Realm Cloak Giant, Beanstalk Giant, Lobstruck Beast, and Horn of Valhalla. However, all of them become actually really, really good if we have Gorion or Lucky Clover on the battlefield. Section 3 Adventure Payoffs. Mysterious Pathlighter makes every creature with an adventure enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter while one mare puts the counter on itself so it can grow into a very big threat. Section 4. Tempo and Rebuy. These cards accomplish two very important tasks in our deck. We can use them to bounce our opponent's permanents to their hand while we try to go off, or we can rebuy our own adventure creatures to our hand in order to reuse the adventure side again, maybe even drawing more cards with Edgewell Innkeeper. Grassilax gives us extra card draw, Getaway card and Alora are both repeatable bounce effects in a stick, while Chilane and Heldbreaker Horror are easily the two most powerful cards in the deck, allowing us to do many busted things but also rebuy our adventure cards. That's why they're in the deck. Section 5. Swiss Army Knives. Ranger Captain of Vios can tutor for any one drop in our deck, which essentially means we can find Edgewell Innkeeper or sometimes Giant Killer for the removal part. Section 6. Ramp. A few mana rocks and mana fixers, the usual package. Section 7. 7. Removal. A couple 1 for 1 removals since we are more of a tempo deck, and a few board wipes plus massive bounce spells that also work in our favor. So that's the deck, that's the deal, now let's go on an adventure! What's up everyone, welcome back one more time, you know the deal, we play Historic Brawl, and today we are visiting Adventures. We are going on an adventure using Gorion, Wise Mentor as Commander. We are going versus Ursa. And we mold the first hand, but this one looks pretty good, right? Turn 1, Gilded Goose is such a strong play. Especially in 3 color stack. Like, turn 1, Lana War Elves is great, but turn 1, Goose is our Birds of Paradise. Alright. So we have the Innkeeper. We could also play Gorion already. Should we go for it? Maybe we go Edgewell Innkeeper. Holding up. Ugh, I should have played the planes. Because that would allow me to hold up the swords. But that's alright. Opponent is on Ursa. So a tough matchup to begin with. Let's go planes and play our Gorion. So now every time we cast an adventure spell, we can copy it, choose new targets for the copy. As we are approaching 1,000 subscribers, opponent counters our commander with an essence scatter. Hope you can subscribe to the channel, one of the greatest historic brawl channels in the world. Hit the like, hit the sub button, so I can continue doing this forever. Opponent plays a Skyclave Relic. Huh, we can mess with that thing. Can bounce it. We have the Emerald Dragon. Could ramp ourselves. We're going to shock in the Temple Garden and go Arcane Signet. Attack for one. 
and uh, should probably bounce the relic to their hands. We're not drawing the card, but we are gaining some time to maybe play Gorion again, double up on our adventures. We can counter any activated or triggered ability from a non-creature. Skyclave back. Hopefully we can draw more adventures that we can play. All right, opponent as for sentinels we could kill it but we much we would rather do that without giving them an extra card getaway card is a fine card with our adventures the idea is that we play the adventures and we buy them back so we could always oh we can even buy back check this out can i do this right we could buy back the goose because if we tap the goose we can crew can crew the car with the goose. Can crew with as many creatures as we want, so long we crew with the required amount of power. But so maybe we use this to kill the Esper Sentinel. We can pay the one. Oh no, we had we didn't have to pay again. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, so now I cannot crew. Well, I messed that up. I can do it the next turn. <laughs> um, yeah, my my idea was to use the swords on the Esper Sentinel and then crew the vehicle with the Goose. Goose comes back to our hand, we replay him, have another food, and so we do this little game. But I messed that up. I don't think it's going to be of relevance. But the idea is, yes, the idea of this deck is we play our adventures, we hopefully double them up with Gorion, but then when we have them on the battlefield, since the creatures are not so good, we have many ways to buy them back and have them again in hand. So we replay the adventures and so on and so forth. Okay, so maybe this time we have to go Gorion. So we have our engine online. Gorion to double up the... Look at this board. Gorion doubles up the triggers. Edgewell Innkeeper giving us the extra card draw. Getaway card, bouncing back the, the spells. It's a very cool synergy. Let's go Gorion. They will untap with Emery, but that's all right. So now I can tap these and I can tap these. Get in with the getaway car. Getaway car is such a good card. I love the card. And it's really flavorful. Get back the Gilded Goose. And then next turn we can cast the Gilded Goose again. Get the... Get the food. Ah, this deck is so chunky, but I like the synergies. Like, the synergies are great. Of course, we're going to play versus the strongest deck. We are playing with Emerald Dragons and Okame Rangers, so... The matchmaker says we should play versus Ursa, of course. He knows what we're trying to do. Anyways, there's another there's another adventure card. This one exiles. This one blinks. We have a way to protect Gorion from targeted removal. Could make a couple of one ones. Well, we could make four one ones. White human creature tokens. Double that up. We copy it. Check if they want to counter. Well, the great thing is that they cannot counter the copy. Unless they have some random counter to do that. Metallic Rebuke. Okay, so they Metallic Rebuke the original Adventure card, so we lose the Adventure card, but we get the copy of the token producer. Thanks, Sugorion. So, get a couple of 1-1s. And then... Smack with the Getaway card again. What is playing this... Very slowly. I don't know if they are having connection troubles or they are baffled away by our power. Check them out. The rope is being consumed. So, we are very close to Phyrexia. All will be one. Hope you are enjoying the previous season and... Looks like we are going to be going to play, play again with Infect or in this case will be Poison. On toxic, toxic one, toxic two, and then there's proliferate. I love proliferate. So looks like we are going to be proliferating some, 
some creatures and some planeswalkers. I would like to make a very good plus one plus one counters deck. Luca has sent me a, a Tanazil Quandrix. Very nice deck. Maybe now with Proliferate it will be even better. Uh, we can play now with Atraxas and with the new Elish Norm, so it's going to be a nice season for sure. So make sure you can catch on those previews so you know what commanders we are going to bring to the channel. But we should be close. February 7th is the release on Magic Arena. And I'm able to tell all about this because my opponent is playing really slowly, but I don't want to edit out these parts. I want to talk with you guys and girls again. Ah, Vanquish the Horn. All right, so we lose our board. All right, opponent had the board wipe. They were slow rolling it. Ooh, Grassilax. All right, so Grassilax is another creature that allows us to either bounce creatures to our hand, which are really good with our adventure cards, or if we get in with those, then we draw cards. So it's only upside. We like bouncing our creatures back to hand, but we also like to get in with our creatures. Anyways, we are going to have fuel to continue playing. And opponent is again salt roping us. Well, that looks to be the case. Resolves, we can crew the getaway car. And this will get us a car from the Grassilax. Yeah, things are working out for the adventure guy. Gorion! Can I steal that from C uh, CGB? Gorion! Am I getting sued now? Alright. Ooh, Boseju. Should we use it? I feel like I just want to play it as a land. Yeah. I don't mind about their, their artifacts. Hong Kong? Oh, maybe... Well... I missed this opportunity, so I could have played the Gilded Goose, crew the getaway car with Gilded Goose, replay the Gilded Goose. So I'm missing a foot here. Unlicensed hers, keep increasing. There's Ursa coming down to battle the Goose and the Grassilax and a Sai. Wow. Well, those are really very good cards. Ugh. Okay, go to our turn. Nice. An adventure that bounces things. So how many car how many lands? Five, six, seven. Have seven mana right now. Seven mana. Ah. So can definitely bounce something. Can go to They are at four, right? They are at four. We can get them. I mean, they are going to try to crew the unlicensed hers. Let's, let's see if we can get them with the Sword Coast Serpent Adventure. So, we crew the getaway card. Not going to crew with Gilded Goose because we might need to activate him for mana. Opponent taking a million years to respond to this. Of course. There you go. Good job, buddy, accepting. All right, so now we can attack with the getaway car. They should be tapping the Ursa, right? They tap the Ursa. Let's um, decline this trigger. All right. So now they tap here. Yeah. But we can counter the trigger ability, so... Oh, check this out. So we counter the trigger ability. And then we remove the Psy with the Sword Coast Serpent. Sword Coast Serpent. <laughs> That's so good. Deny the trigger, bounce the Psy, get him for four. Yes! Oh my god, this is so janky. Opponent... Yeah, opponent is in disbelief. Opponent is in disbelief. Like, 
counter the trigger from the hearse, you don't become a vehicle creature, and then remove your only blocker. <laughs> this is so good! <laughs> take it, Ursa player, take it for slow rolling this game. Oh my god. Yeah. Historic brawl for you, ladies and gentlemen. Magic. Magic. And as an act of magic, I'm going to make Psy go back to your hand and I'm going to crush you with a getaway car. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, call an ambulance, but not for me. For you, my guy. Smelly cow. Take it. Four to the face. Good game. Uh, it is so funny. Yes! Adventures! Adventures taking down Ursa. Here we are back for more adventures. Torturing opponents with adventures. Uh, super overpowered adventures. Gorion. And if you're enjoying this content, hit the like and subscribe button. Support this channel or else. All right, so shut up for a moment. Let's go, Ivy. Turn one, Lana, or else. Yikes. Well, that's no good. You never like to see Ivy get their things going so quickly. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, play a land. And never know if I'm supposed to do this right now or wait, because they have protection spells. So the upside of waiting is that we can get Ivy when they are targeting their, her with something and maybe we make them spend some resource, but I feel like I had to do it main phase. But here she comes again. This is a bad matchup for our deck because we're just a tempo deck with adventures. We don't have actual, actually very good removal. So, bouncing Ivy to their hand really is not ideal. But well, as with any deck, you're going to have good matchups and bad matchups. This is a bad matchup for us. Looking to play Volo, maybe Realm Clock Giant, the Wrath part, is actually very good here. Because if they overcommit, well, they are top down. They have a land or elves, but they will be top, top down. The problem is like they are ramping so hard here. I don't even know if uh, a wrath is going to save us. Take three. Okay, so Fable Passage. Oh, we can tap it for mana. Thank you, Chromatic Lantern. Destroy all non-giants with a big hand. Boom! The big hand. All right, so. We dealt with Ivy one time. There's a Sanctum Weaver. Who? All right, so everything comes back so quick. Let's see, maybe we have to play Gorion. Ooh, Gorion. And then Gorion starts doubling up. We can tap two creatures. Is this good? Tap two creatures. We are playing with so ch such janky cards. All right, Gorion. Gorion makes our Adventures cards really good because Check this out. This card is a is free makes free mana. Because we add one mana of any color, but with Gorion we add two. So that is a ritual for us. And then we have a couple of creatures that double bounce. And I need to do this right now. So I can bounce your IV, copy it, bounce the weaver. Yeah, but Ivy is so inexpensive right now. That's that's what I mean. Our tempo plan versus Ivy is not really good. Here comes the Weaver again, and here comes Ivy again. Maybe Volo can get us out of this situation. So Volo here is, we have several humans, but then we have a lot of different creatures that should benefit from, Go from Volo. Or King Signet, you're late to the party. So, 
Maybe we have to play the Arcane Signet, because that's the only way we get to our bigger creatures. Oh, we can make mana with Rose Thorn Acolyte. And we could also play Vola right here, that makes our other creatures better. Maybe we have to invest in Volo. Let's play the Signet. Make mana with the Acolyte. It's a ritual here. And... Let's see. Let's see if this is enough mana. Because now we have... S these... Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, well... Uh, Alright, so I didn't need to make the mana. I was... I was hope... I was... Uh, I counted like we were going to have three mana available. But we are not. Okay, so... Now, at the beginning of their turn, we are going to tap them. So they don't, they don't use the mana from the Sanctum Weaver. I didn't need to spend the mana from the Rose Thorn Acolyte. All right, opponent gives hexproof to their creatures, so they won't be tapped. Sure. What's the follow up? We have big creatures, and Volo Online means that we can start doubling them up. Uh, they have a big IV. Yikes. Alright, going to attack with everything? I'm taking that trade. Yeah. So I'm going to take this trade. Wow! They don't kill Volo? It's an interesting line. Okay. Planes and... We could either play a big creature or we could double up on our smaller creatures. And the good thing is that we could put a couple of brazen borrowers in play. While at the same time super ramping with the Acolyte. <laughs> sneaky sneaky follow. This is deck building at its finest. Because Volo is a secret commander in this list. Yeah, double Acolyte and planning on playing a Brazen Borrower with Flash. We're doing it. Okay, Mutator. And a Cultivate. That's fine. That's really fine. Wow, are we coming back? You see, you see, adventures are overpowered. Okay, so let's get a couple brazen borrowers. <laughs> this is so chunky, but it's working. It's actually working. And we have a Garen Briggs Carver. Well, Garen Briggs Carver is a pump spell effect that should be good, but it's better if we have. Gorion online because we can copy it and it's actually a good spell. We could also play the Realm Clock Giant, get two giants. Yikes, what's the best line? Two giants, two serpents, a carver. Let's go to well, let's play Gorion. He's our commander. We always choose to go with the commander if we are in this type of situation. Let's uh, attack with the team, and maybe we can get some good uh, some good combat tricks with the Carver. Attack with all of these, leave one blocker for IV. See if they want to block something. Maybe they will, I mean, I would block the Volo. All right, no blocks. Well, if there are no blocks, then I'm going to wait with the carver up. S 
Terex. Ooh, that is Scarix. All right, so they are getting a lot of value from this play. Now, do they find a shore shark? They could use something. They could bounce if they mutate on the shore shark. And what else? Any combat research. So it's an 8 8 flyer that draws, it, draws them a card when they connect. Yeah, I think I'm going to take 8 here because we have lethal. There we go. Down to 7. They can draw a card. But we have lethal from the Garenbrick Carver. Ranger Captain of Eos can find us. Well, the good thing about Ranger Captain of Eos is that our one drops are actually too good because we are taking them for their face value, but then we can use the adventures as well. So this is uh, <laughs> Ranger Captain of Eos is fantastic in this deck. And I guess that one of these fairy guild ma guide mothers should be even harder for our opponent to block because now we can give plus one plus two plus one and flying to both creatures yeah you can give that to ivy as well i don't care wow this deck is actually working yes you have a better ivy and we are going to give flying to volo so you don't block it yes check this out baby yes Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to play versus Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, because why not? All the time, every time. Subscribe to this channel, because, you know, check this out. We're playing with adventures, so yeah, you have to subscribe to this. Or not. All right, so we will mulligan this hand and start with a Love Struck Beast. She's quite powerful. Ivy again. And we are one more time on the draw. Let's get lucky one more time. Playing a beautiful forest. I think like we are winners just because we play with these beautiful lands. Regardless of the results, we win because our cards are more beautiful than our opponents. There's an Elvish Mystic. They always have the little mana dorks, don't they? Okay, so now we have two pass. Try to memory lapse something. Getting for one. Opponent knows something is fishy. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one. I don't care about this, right? Should I? Well, maybe we can make them draw this again. Maybe we can make them draw that again, because they didn't play a land. If they don't have the, th the third land, then this, this play is brutal. Do they have the land? Ah, they got me. They got me. Well done. Well done. As if they didn't have the land, that that on itself could have, draw the, could have drawn the concession. Because they would have not drawn the land yet again. All right. Getting with a 1-1. One, one. And maybe playing Love Struck Beast is good. 3 mana 5-5. Five, five. Should be... Should be interesting. <laughs> Here is the Coatl again. And Ivy. Ooh, Grassy Lax. Hmm. Should we bounce Ivy? Oh, bouncing Ivy. It's so bad. Like, we are... We are so not ready to play versus Ivy with this deck. I don't I don't know how we beat her last the last game. Alright, let's attack. There it is. You lose 20% of your life. And then you can Yavi Maya Coast. Do we have to bounce her? I feel like if if we don't bounce her, then bad things are going to happen. 
Let's do these and also draw a card. We need to find yet again our Realm Cloak Giant. Innkeeper. Oh, well, Innkeeper can draw us cards. Oh, IV keeps coming back. And one of their best car cards, the C Dasher Octopus. So you're going to draw a fair amount of cards. We will jump. So Lapstruck Beast is not offensive anymore. Should be a, book, a good blocker. Well, there's a Faithful Absence. We like to see that. Love to see that card. So, first order of business is to kill Ivy before they untap all. Well, do they have the Tamiyo safekeeping? Come on. No, 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 no. They always have it. They always have it. Ah. Well, now we are actually losing. They always have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got us. We had to take the shot. We had to. Curious Obsession, so now they can draw even more cards. We're going to have to double block the Coato, because otherwise we are very dead. Okay, what do you what do you choose to kill? Corian, makes sense. You, go back to the command zone. And they draw... Oh my god, two cards. hi yeah 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 yay It's a... Uh, oh, we cannot even cast the Realm Cloak. Because we need another white source. So, we're pretty dead. More things? Do you have more cards to play? Oh, Tireless Provisioner, Parcel Beast. <laughs> well, looks like we're going to even the scores versus Ivy. I mean, Celestis, well... Ha. Huh. Yeah, well, Edgewell Innkeeper makes Lovestruck Beast become able to attack. Not that we are going to do that. But if we need to. Could also put a couple more 1-1s. One and who knows, who knows. Maybe we find a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Did I put one of those here? now? Can see it. <laughs> good game, good game. So guys, hear me out. I want to make something around building decks, historic brawl decks with just commons and uncommons, so no rares, no mythics besides besides the commander. Check the hand, opponent goes first, Ramos. Ramos Dragon Engines. Hand looks cool. Okay, keep. I want to make that. Uh, I'm not sure the format yet, if it's going to be like we try to play against each other and I record the videos or I try to run lists that don't have any rares or mythics and try to see if I can win one single game, which I don't think is going to be very good content. But if any of you are interested and would like and are actually interested in brewing decks without rares or mythics besides the commander, and want to give it a try and share the, the list with me. I would try to start gathering some of those lists. And maybe try them, play them in the queue, see which of those are actually decent. Uh, and do something with, with that. I have not decided yet. So this is just a challenge for brewers to make historic brawl decks without rares and mythics. I know that, for example, Raga Draga is fantastic for that. You know my Raga Draga. No rares, no mythic lists. It actually wins a lot. And I want to see which are the best commanders for no rares, no mythics. And I want to maybe do it in a, a budget, budget magic type of video. Mostly like MTG Goldfish does. But for Historic Brawl. Because I feel like the... Um, the concern from the Historic Brawl community probably is obviously around the access to the cards and not being able to play with all the decks. So I would like to do something about that. So 
if some some of you fancy doing the, do uh, do that, then hit me up on the comment section. You can also send an email to brasarobotmtg at outlook.com. And send me a message. We'll see what we can do. All right, so Val. Now they are playing Ramos pretty soon, right? So I feel like we have to bounce her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Spouse Silvala for the scry. Fairy Guide Mother. No thanks. We could also bounce. Well, maybe here bouncing Elvish Mystic is good because next turn they will have no possibility to play both the Mystic and the Silvala unless they have a extra green source. But it's a little bit of a cute play to go for that. Spellbomb should be used on something better, maybe. All right, play Gorion. And... Ah, I tap my only white source. Well, obviously I wanted to hold up to do this, which... Now that I don't have the source of plowshares, I'm just going to do that. So I don't look like an absolute ass by not having... Play my land before playing Gorion. Void Rend. All right. But now you cannot play your Mana Dork, right? <laughs> they did tap their Temple Garden too. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Uh, land is good because now we can recast Gorion, and I feel like. Yeah, should be good, and they are struggling with their menace. Found a sound out pass. They're one mana short from Ramos. Oh, no. I hate seeing that. Cabaret Rebels. Cabaret Rebels, but they didn't have a zero drop. Ooh, Alora, this is... This is another card that lets us bounce our own creatures. That is deck building at its finest, people. Alright, so... You can blink of an eye. How much mana do we have? Six. Blink of an eye, Cabaret Rebels. But do we pay the Kicker? But do we pay the Kicker? Oh. We can plus two, plus two Gorion. I don't think like we should do that. That's attack for three. Could always play that as an instant. Could also source to plowshares their mystic. Okay, yeah, let's play the kicker. Ooh, mana war. Ah, how I would like to have the mana to resolve the mana war, but, well, 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 you touch my cover already, Rebels, I concede. Simple as that. So, ladies and gentlemen, we get to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed Gorion Adventures. If you did, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, send me your non-rares, no mythic lists if you want to accept that challenge. We will see each other on a future video in the same Brasso Robot MTG channel as always.